Welcome back, ZeroK fans, to the March 2019 1v1 tournament. We're into round six right off the bat with a match between Mana 12 and FFC. FFC going for Rovers, Mana 12 also on Rovers, and we're on Eye of Horus, which is a actually a really good map. This These tournaments, I kind of like the way that the maps are kind of varied. You don't really necessarily know one game to the next what the map is going to be. And the players do have choice over where the maps are. There's a pool of three. You can ban one and the other person pick. Well, one person bans, the other person picks with the remaining two. And that's cool. Eye of Horus, however, is one of the maps that is a bit more normal. So it's nice to have the variety, but it's also nice to end off with a fairly straightforward macro map. It's just an honest map that people know how to play, and it should be good. FFC going a bit more aggressive off the bat. Manu 12 over expanded with their commander, as you do, actually. This is not a bad idea. I like that Manu 12 is doing this. This is something that FFC is also doing. Because using your commander, especially on a map like this, where you are going to be probably contesting the center quite a lot, it's important to send a commander forward because they just have a gun. That's all it is. Like, the commander is also a gun. On the other hand, the commander is also out of position, and FFC can just take out this expansion. Oh, well, maybe not, actually. FFC not going for it. Instead of going for the main base, which is a little more viable... Unfortunately for them, there is that Lotus there, which means the Scorcher cannot get in unscathed. <laughs> FC's playing it super safe, making sure the Scorcher doesn't get in the range of that Lotus. I like that. But they can't get rid of the Mason, sadly enough. So the main base will be rebuilt without incident. And at the same time, Mana 12 just setting up a little bit to make sure that it's harder to rush in like this again. Oh, never mind. Second Metal Lake Charger going down and for free, too. Scorcher gets out of there. No problem. FFC, two Metal Lake Charges for free. And now getting a third or second Scorcher on top of the dart. This Scorcher is dead from Manu 12. FFC is doing a great job opening this matchup. Now, Manu 12 is not taking that line down. Going in with a Scorcher of their own in the back lines. Able to take out one of FFC's Metal Lake Charges, possibly a Solar Plant. FFC cannot really contest this. They need to try to intercept that Scorcher on its return. But it will take that Metal Lake Charger no matter what. Does take a Scorcher as well. There's that death, though. FFC managing to defend eventually, but Mana 12 is prepared. They do have darts set up on both expansions just to make sure they know what's going on and they can stop the Mason when it comes in. FFC is not expecting this at all. It is not sending anything to protect that Mason. Now, darts don't have a huge amount of damage. Masons have a lot of HP. So it will take about 18 shots for the, Mason, for the dart to kill, which I think is about 15 seconds. No, not less than that, actually. Or more than that, actually. No, it'll take like 30 seconds to kill that thing. So there is time for the Scorchers to come in. If that was a Scorcher, it would be a different story, but no, Mana 12 only sending the darts for that. And I like that. Mana 12 did lose a lot in their main base. They have managed to rebuild rapidly, though. While at the same time, the Mason has been saved, but just barely. And FFC still behind a bit on economy. They did lose two Metal Extractors, just like Mana 12. So, FFC not really that far ahead as a result. Mana 12 in a much more secure position. They have the energy, they have the metal. They have a knowledge of when FFC is expanding, and that is extremely handy. And FFC is also excessing at this point. FFC, where is your power production? Where is your energy? You need something here. What? <laughs> okay, to be fair, the commander is also gone. It's not exactly a me quote. I just felt like saying that and wasn't sure if anyone would get the reference. I guess Seto Kaiba doesn't really play 0k much anymore. They would probably have gotten the reference. Anyhow, with with that said, completely unrelated, FFC still going for a bit of harassment on Mana 12, and actually is doing a reasonably good job keeping Mana 12 from expanding any further. The center of the map, not as easy to contest. Ooh, gets rid of Scorch for free, but loses their own. However, it's this expansion that I care about. Like, Mana 12 is now falling behind metal-wise compared to FFC. FFC just needs a hell of a lot more power. Where are your power plants? FFC, your commander is idle. Build some power plants. Just, just build all the power plants. You will not win if without power plants you're accessing so much. FFC would have a massive advantage if it weren't for the fact that they are installed hard. I don't even know how much they've been losing up to this point just because of that. It's a lot. It's gotta be 500, 600 metal easy. Like, just build a few power plants and you'll be fine. And caretakers. Whatever. FFC's got a lot more metal than they're using. A lot more metal than they're using. Heck, upgrade your commander, why not? That actually wouldn't be a bad idea if it's going to be that far forward. Mana 12 taking advantage of the situation, though. They do have the metal and the production capacity, so this isn't going to waste. This means Mana 12 is just a matter of time before they just take this. 
FFC has no way of contesting it when they don't have the energy or the caretakers to actually make use of the metal they've gotten. And now they're losing all that metal. So FFC, FFC essentially just got a bunch of metal extractors early game for nothing. Absolutely nothing. Wait, what? Yes, that is my... my Dominic is my name. I just was suggested to do that for reasons of, like, it's easier to sell it as a professional's name to call myself Dominic than Shadow Fury. Anyway. I don't know if I totally agree, but that's why I went for at least my real first name. Not real last name, though. There are a lot of Dominics in the world. Oh. Zero. Oh, I see. That's what you're talking about. Zero K. Names. Such. Sorry, Twitch just distracting me. Let's get back to the game. And Mano 12, trying to harass FFC, doing a fair bit of damage and reducing FFC's metal production quite a lot. But again, FFC didn't need it. They've been accessing like mad. What, the, what is the excess so far? Metal produced. FFC is actually slightly ahead. Metal used. FFC is the fourth or 3,000 metal behind. Because FFC has excess 3,000 metal. FFC could have been easily on par in terms of production value. And actually, in terms of... The overall match, FFC has been doing a fine job winning. I really wish I had the attrition stats, but the attrition counter is broken. For those of you wondering, I don't know what's happened, but as of round four, the attrition counter just stopped working, and I can't bring it back. I don't know why. I've tried messing with the settings files. I've tried resetting that stuff. I could outright reset my settings. I'd rather not do that, but I could. Might have to. But yeah, that's it. Mana 12 takes it. FFC, unfortunately, doesn't really have a whole lot to work with. I think that's a slightly premature throwing in the towel. But the fact that FFC accessed as much as they had means that there's really not a whole lot they could have done. 3.6k. That's... Oh, man. The, sh the sheer amount of army. Like, if FFC had not accessed that, Mano 12 would have been on the ropes. I mean, FFC was holding on pretty well. That switched over to Rippers, that would have been like 10 Rippers or... No, 10 Rippers Ravagers. It would have been enough to just wipe everything clean. Mano 12 would have had no chance. But unfortunately, FFC did not use that metal. And so was right, very behind. Yeah, like a thousand to two thousand. It would have been a thousand to four thousand if FFC had used all that metal. They had the if they had the caretakers from that early expansion attempts. I need to get okay. People are talking about wanting to be diamond from subscribers because they have better emotes than I do. I only have the towel. I got to find better emotes. I know. I have no ideas. If anyone has ideas for better emotes, please let me know. I don't know. I, I can have, I think, two emotes at this point for people in the $5 tier. I only have the one, which is currently the towel. As is being thrown. Wait, where's... Did Minotaur lose their commander? They did. Huh, okay. Or did... No, whatever. Anyway, that is round six. I don't think it's... I don't know if it's done. It's going to kind of come down to what happens with the standings because right now the standings if we look at them for the top three oops. top three standings mano 12 at five wesley at f or six six oh wesley five one is ride four two is a ride okay all three of them have done so we are actually done this will be it yeah we actually have a clear top three actually clear possibly top four depends on what fmc does but yeah Clear top three for sure. Oh, no, never mind. No, we don't. No, we don't. No, we don't. There is going to be potentially a tiebreaker. Definitely a tiebreaker. Pet Turtle or King's Dad, one of the two is going to have to fight against Ezer Ride in a tiebreaker for third place. So there is going to be one tiebreaker. And it's going to be Pet Turtle or King's Dad facing against Ezer Ride. That is going to be up after I watch Pet Turtle and King's Dad go at it now. Because, hey, why not? They've, they're still in their game, I think. Yeah, Petrol and Kingstar are still going at it. So let's go check them out in Thornford. Oh, too loud. Okay, cool. Yeah, sorry, FFC. I mean, I know you're watching, but yeah, it's just... This is a thing. Hey, Tufty Indigo, you don't know my last name is not really Casts. Although, the way it's spelled, it's more like my first name is Dominic Casts, and I just shorten it to Dominic. Because it sounds better. Because it's more like how people speak. Because no one's, as far as I know, is called Dominic Casts. 
Except me, apparently, as I've just announced right now. Not legally, though. It's just Dominic. All right, to the game. We are on Thornford. We have King's Dead. We have Pet Turtle. And we have the Corn Starts. Wait, did they change the Thornford? Oh, no, Thornford is four starts. Hovercraft for King's Dead. Hovercraft for Pet Turtle and Pet Turtle. Having a bit of a hard time maintaining Mac Patrol. Doing a reasonably good job actually holding back King's Dead. But Pyrrhic victories all around. King's Dead able to start wiping out these defenses over to the western side of the map. Pet Turtle, however, with some nice counterattacks over the western side of the map, or eastern side of the map, rather, forcing King's Dead, King's Dead to turn back at least a little bit. The Maces have done their job, but King's Dead is actually slightly behind Pet Turtle despite that. Thanks to the harassment from Pet Turtle coming in. King's Dead still on a reasonably good position and bound to assault the southwest side of the map, which Pet Turtle is, well, they're pretty prepared for, I think. And they got the Halberds already set up. They have a bunch of defenses already set up. At the same time, loads of Halberds going to the eastern side of the map. Halberds! Unit of the match! This is going to be Halberds. They are going... If Pet Turtle is going to take this, which they might actually do, this is looking terrifying for King's Dead. And look at it. They got a maze in the main base. They have a Quill. They got a bunch of Halberds coming in for their blood. Not the best combination. Not for King's Dead. For Pet Turtle, they're fine, though. The one thing for Pet Turtle, they are accessing... But the matter of these halberds, the halberds are coming in for- well, two of them have already died. Might be able to get rid of the air factory. If that goes down, that's at least going to be one less domain King's Dead has to worry about. Does go down, Pet Turtle- sorry, Pet Turtle has to worry about. King's Dead's going to be able to actually fight in that domain or not. But at the same time, King's Dead gets rid of Pet Turtle's commander. At the same time, the halberds not able to defend as well. So an air factory for a commander, I don't think is a great trade for Pet Turtle. King's Dead, again, they lost the air control, so at the very least- Pet Turtle doesn't have to build any air. They know that air is possibly on the way, that King's Dead wants air. But not immediately. However, there's still Harbors coming in. Don't go over the Stinger! Don't go over the Stinger! Why are you going over the Stinger? That is su- Actually, that's not a bad idea. I'm thinking of it. Gotta say, that's suicide! No, it's actually not. It's actually fairly effective. Gonna be honest. That wasn't a bad idea. Unfortunately, it does buy enough time for the Maces to, to crawl in and, well, that- Eliminates the opportunity for the Halberd to actually do any real damage. But there are more Halberds coming. A lot more damage on the ray on the way. Pet Turtle should be able to get rid of basically everything. And yeah, nicely done. Just getting away from the explosions before they happen. There we go. Get rid of all that stuff. Get rid of the maces. Get rid of the stingers. Pet Turtle might be able to turn this around. It's going to be tricky. There's a lot of reclaim going over to King's Dead. And that is helping them out quite a bit. Although they are accessing again. So Pet Turtle not that far behind as a result. Pet Turtle also on there with the storage. So it's going to come down to how well these halberds actually do their job. Pet Turtle, however, will be able to reclaim the bottom side. And wait, have we not seen... Have these castles not been reclaimed yet? There are still castles available for reclaim. And most of them available for Pet Turtle, too. Hey, Pet Turtle can still take this. The halberd destruction was a bit of a pain, a bit of a setback. But this expansion is completely threatened. King's Dad knows that they're desperately building up Stardust. There is not time. There is no time whatsoever. These halberds have got this. They're going to be able to come in here, wipe out the Stardust. Some daggers come in to try to help deal with that, but it's not going to be enough. That maces are out of position. They're attacking instead. Halberds from Pet Turtle, again, going into just run defense. While the ones over to the bottom of the map, they should be able to take out everything. I'm not even going for that, actually. They don't even care. Wow. They just do not care. They don't even care about whether or not they're vulnerable. they just just attacking. Don't even care about dealing with the defenses. They will eventually, yeah, and that's good. Help get rid of some of the stuff going on here, but yeah, it's going to be kind of difficult. With the Venus coming in, however, not able to do much damage, the Halberds are just wiping out everything. This, sheesh, Pet Turtle, they know their Halberds, that's for sure. They love their Halberds. King's Dad having a hell of a time dealing with that. I don't think this factory is even going to work for it. I don't... Are we not... Okay, is there a Gentleman's Agreement on the Thunderbird? Because this would be a great time for Thunderbirds. This would be the best time for Thunderbirds, in fact. I, I don't understand why they haven't been used, but... That would go a long way. King's Dead still doing a reasonably good amount of work with the Phoenix. Unfortunately, water does kind of deal with fire pretty well. It's not Roman Candle, apparently. It's an A-Palm. It should actually burn in the water, but... Oh, well. Whatever. It's just fire. Just dropping fire on your opponents. Water deals with it, apparently, despite the fact that I'm fairly certain it doesn't deal with Napalm. I could be wrong. I, I assume Napalm works like a Roman Candle, but maybe it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't have its own fuel. Like, the right chemicals can, though. If you have any chemical that just sustains its own reaction, that ge generates oxygen for itself to keep burning, then, yeah, you can actually work with that in water. 
Argus generates an electrical current, causing the water to electrolyze and getting you free oxygen to work with. That would also burn underwater. Regardless of how things burn underwater, though, Pet Turtle's go gonna be burning a lot above water. All their characters going down, along with Kingstead's own daggers, but the threat has been leveled. The flails are being built, but Pet Turtle unfortunately didn't have that as quickly as it would have been ideal. And the characters kind of stuck repairing each other. I mean, Pet Turtle like, would kind of hope they just manually... Okay, I guess manually repair the characters isn't a bad idea, but then manually factory, because they are accessing hard. And that is not ideal. Especially since this flail being up means no further damage gets done. There we go. The flail is up. The phoenixes should not be a problem anymore. Overall, though, Pet Turtle is not really in the best of positions. King Stead's... King Stead's able to harass a lot of the stuff Pet Turtle has. Pet Turtle doesn't have a lot of defense to actually deal with that. Pet Turtle at least does have more money to work with. Has more metal. Not as much energy, though. A lot of energy was lost. The title generators are doing a reasonably good job, but there's not many of them. Honestly, at this point, build a fusion plant. Or, or maybe not, actually, come to think of it. There's a lot of... There's air forces coming in now. It might be a little bit of a bad time to build a fusion plant. Not really sure. Still, though, more energy is required. If nothing else, more energy is required. And more anti-air, too. I mean, this is... A lot of Phoenix is just taking pot shots. Again, not really threatening too much, because the Lotuses are taking the brunt of the damage. But yeah, Phoenix is coming in, dealing even more of the Halberds. It's just... Not a whole lot of effective damage being dealt, but still, it's threatening. It does deal damage. Pet Turtle still has to deal with that, and they actually aren't using all their metal. Unfortunately, this caretaker here is out of position. The one caretaker that was close enough to help the factory was killed. They got that fourth caretaker. On the other hand, King's Dead, they've got all their caretakers. They have all their production that they need. They're good. Pet Turtle is having a hard time holding on, though. It's a very, very slight hard time, though. It's still They're still using 40 metal per second. It's still about even. But another caretaker would be a good idea. In fact, I would highly recommend another caretaker right about now. That Quill's doing a fine job of the reclaim, but... Yeah, another caretaker would be good. Also, why is Quill not building? The, the Quill's over the north. In a good position to help build up some razors to help get rid of the Phoenixes. But, hey, at least Kingstead's commander goes down. So that does help with the frontline push. And really, overall, Kingstead has had an economic weakness. That has been a thing. It's just, I don't know how much of a thing it's going to be. Ooh, guess where the quills, though? Nicely done. Very least, King's Dead stopping Pet Turtle from expanding much more to the north. The thing is, these phoenixes are chipping away at Pet Turtle. That can't be denied. Like, Pet Turtle's having a hard time holding on to this just because every time Pet Turtle tries to do something, King's Dead's there to burn it down. And every time Pet Turtle does something, they do it, and then King's Dead has loads of quills coming in to rebuild. So, to me, Pet Turtle right now is kind of suffering from not having these quills be active. The fact that they're idle... The fact that they're not reclaiming, or building, or building up caretakers, or whatever, in the main base, is causing Pet Turtle to suffer. Or rebuilding all these metal extractors over here. This Pet Turtle is gradually losing the advantage they had. They're losing the initiative, and I don't know how well they're going to be able to get it back without either another major assault, which they could do, they have a lot of halberds, or coming in for the rebuild. I do like the fact that they are reclaiming, though. This reclaim won't last long, however. It's only 500 metal, and at 20 metal per second... Well, it's going to be more than that. It's only 50 metal per second. It's last like 10-15 seconds. Build up storage, but it won't actually do a whole lot as far as consistent economy. On the other hand, only two metal extractors have been lost, so it's easy enough to get back in there. It's just... I... I don't know. This is this is a bit of an important battle, though. These halberds should be able to get rid of the mace. It's, it is going to come down to that. Unfortunately, the fill does go down. But fortunately, the Iris being there is doing a great job allowing the Maces to get in position before they get hit. At least to some extent. Enough probably they can get rid of the Scalpel. Enough they can definitely get rid of the Scalpel, actually. Oof. Flailed up. Fire comes in, though. The Iris might go down. It is being targeted by the Scalpel, but it does dodge the fire. That is a huge blow. That would be a huge blow, at least. That's not... It isn't necessarily a huge blow yet, but it will be a problem going forward. Oh, but the Phoenix is able to do its job anyway, despite the use of the Flail. The Flail does go down, the Iris Warper stays up, and the Quills are still able to do a lot of reclaim. Wow, the Maces are doing a... F Maces also doing a fine job getting rid of all those Phoenixes. So, Kingstad losing a fair bit of their army. They're actually slowly getting attrition on that Air Force, which isn't going to be a great thing to have, especially as Pet Turtle is gradually reclaiming this entire center field. And nothing is really contesting that. And how the flails are going in, they're stopping them, helping stop the phoenixes. Not quite killing them, though, but it does at least mean it's going to take longer for the phoenixes to come back. And the more maces come in, the more flails come in, the harder that is going to be to maintain. And at this point, with two flails coming in, 
and three maces. Just that alone is going to be enough to get rid of any phoenixes. And, okay, pet turtle. I really wish we would build more caretakers. Like, really, really, really wish we build, like, five or six caretakers. Just go for it. You got enough reclaim. Just get the caretakers. Or build defenses. That works, too. Okay, now we're, like, eh, it's one of those things. It's a bit tricky sometimes when you have a very reclaim-focused economy is that you have to be careful about what units or what workers are being, or what constructors are being used to build stuff and what are being used to reclaim. That is really important. And at this point, I feel like Pet Turtle is just kind of bouncing back and forth between the two. Not really going in for an even spread of reclaim and construction, rather just going for a massive amounts of reclaim to get storage until excess starts happening and then spend all that storage right away. It'd just be better just to build up as much as you can of caretakers in the main base. Like, build three or four more caretakers in the main base and go. That would do the trick. Still, though, we have enough reclaim coming in for now that at least Pet Turtle's able to hold on reasonably well. It's just it's just a question of what are they going to do to actually attack? Like, how are they going to get in? How are they going to deal the damage? Kingstad's also reclaiming quite a bit in the Northeast that Pet Turtle actually had control over and didn't take. But it's a question of whether Pet Turtle's actually going to be able to use this, and they're really not. They're not using much of this metal. They have 40 metal per second, which is about the same as Kingstad, so they're about even with Kingstad. They're doing a decent job keeping Kingstad's forces from getting out of hand. But it's a matter of what can be done as far as actual assaults. Can they get in here? There's a bunch of Stardusts. I don't even know if I'd bother with this. To be quite honest, I don't think this is worth the time. Or get a Lance. If you get a Lance, it's fine. Just push a Lance in here and wipe out everything. But that doesn't seem to be on the cards. It's entirely a Mace Halberd flail build, and Pet Turtle does not want to deviate. Or to build additional Caretakers. I think they're just not noticing what's going on in the back. The fact they have all this money that isn't or metal is not being spent. I mean, it's a bit of a micro thing, but that is the thing about this game. I mean, Kingstad's a very strong player. Pet Turtle has to play to the top of their game to be able to contest things. And admittedly, Pet Turtle has been putting Kingstad in a tough position. It's not like Pet Turtle has been just running this game and not doing anything. They've actually been giving Kingstad a really hard time. It's just that there's only much that can do if Pet Turtle isn't actually able to secure the win. And I feel like that's sort of gradually happening as more and more defensive structures are being, or sorry, more and more defensive units are being built, more flails are being built, maces are being set up. That's helping a ton, but Pet Turtle, if they hadn't been accessing, again, could have won a lot more. In fact, how much are they accessing? We'll check that after this fight. Hopper coming in here should be able to get rid of these scalpels. Actually, maybe all the scalpels. At least pushing a bit of a retreat, but at this point, that's eh, not happening. Scalpels have gotten their footing again, and no, I'm still retreating. Nope. Okay, cool. You want to move back? Just move back. That's fine. So, let's see what's going on here. Metal excess. 2,400. So that's the difference between metal used being an advantage, 2,000, and being even. And army value, Pet Turtle still has the advantage there. Again, Pet Turtle has been quite efficient with the use of their army. That's been keeping them in the game. More than anything. I mean, the constant reclaim has helped, but the efficient attrition has really been the reason why this hasn't completely fallen apart as Kingstead has at least had reasonably strong economy or reasonably even economy. So Pet Turtle actually able to get ahead, able to wipe out that south side of the map, take out metal extractors, take them for themselves. I like the strong defense setup too. But Kingstead going for the Hail Mary pass with the Dante, or Hail Mary play with the Dante. I could see this getting rid of the force over here. I don't know if I can see it getting rid of the rest of the forces. In fact, if we look at army value, that's still a 3,000 metal disadvantage for Kingstead. So Pet Turtle ahead. Nonetheless. And this Dante, I'm not entirely sure about, especially as it is running into an Iris. I okay, nicely done there. Use the missiles. Burn everything up. Make the Iris no longer useful. Possibly kill it? Possibly kill it? The Iris survives! The Iris is alive bear. No, no. Iris is dead. Iris is dead. That is a huge difference. Dante, I thought I mean, the Dante I thought would actually have a hard time with this, but no, having killed the Iris means that the Dante is pretty much gonna be able to do this for free. The Mace is coming in. The Halberds will be able to actually help out, but losing that Iris is huge. And the Dante, they can wipe out anything you'll buy a Halberd, so there's really not a whole lot worth doing here. Oh, it would have been fine if they survived the Iris had been alive, but I think this might actually turn things around. Again, Pet Turtle has not increased the number of caretakers in their base. I don't know if they realize this caretaker is not doing his job. It's too far away. Its build radius is just not small. It's. Can I show it? I don't know if I can show it. No, whatever. 
The point is, their build radius is way too small. Or I can. Yeah. See, it's just out of range. The green circle there. That is a problem. I don't think Pet Turtle realizes that. Even if it wasn't, I'd still think two or three more caretakers would be a good idea. As I often say, when you get to the point where reclaims becomes a big deal, however many caretakers you think you need based on your static income, add two. Because you're going to reclaim, and you might reclaim a lot, and you're going to want to have that, that available build power when you reclaim. With that, another Dante coming in, and Iris actually coming in for Kingstad as well. I mean, again, they are low in economy. That's the one thing. Petrol have gone from winning by attrition to winning by sheer economy. And the production, yeah, is not quite to the point that they're not accessing, but it is to the point that Kingstad isn't able to keep up. But there's the Thunderbird. Okay, so we are seeing Thunderbirds this game. The Flails were already in place, but the Flails were not really in position. I do like the fact that the Halberd's being split up, though. I like that from Petrol. I think it's more just the line move having to work out that way, but it did work out well to help deal with some of the stuff coming in with the Phoenixes. But yeah, Kingstead, I don't know if they're gonna win this. I feel like Pet Turtle has no real easy has no real way to win, and Kingstead has no real way to actually neither player seems to have any way to win. Like, Pet Turtle seems to not be able to lose, but Kingstead seems to not be able to win. Which means Pet Turtle would win. That's how that works. That is how language works. Yeah, Pet Turtle's basically got this game. King's Dead, they're really trying. They're really pushing hard. And it's just... Pet Turtle at this point, they have the money. They just don't have all the production capacity. Hey, another caretaker! Another set of caretakers! A Lance! Are they, they must be... I, think, I don't think they're watching the stream, but it's like, A Lance! Finally, they built the thing! Hooray! That is a good place to be. Okay, cool. So, with that, I think that would be enough... Uh, that should be able to push things forward. I think Kingston has probably lost this. Pet Turtle is moving into Lance. They do have Flails coming in to help the Air Force, but the Air Force at this point isn't even being built up. I mean, there is a Thunderbird. That is the one problem. The Dante is still a major threat, and there's a Thunderbird coming in here, getting rid of almost everything, but not enough. A bunch of the Halberds are still around. Again, though, Halberds close to the Dante is a death sentence, as the Dante is... If they have the Heat Beam, they have the Scorcher Weapon. They're effective at close range. I don't know what I'm looking at anymore, Twitch Jet. Actually, that was, two years, that was two minutes ago. So I don't know what I was looking at there, Twitch Jet. I really don't know, actually. I must have been zooming in very close to something. Anyway, King's Dead. They got the Dante. That is the one thing they're pushing forward with. And Pet Turtle... Oh, they got this. Yeah. That, that Dante's... There, there's a the number. So 2,000? No, 3,000. Oh, they got lucky. Briefly, the Dante got lucky. Another unit took the brunt of that, of that shot from the Lance. But that's it. The Lance is going to be able to just do it. I think Kingstad realizes that they should be throwing the towel anytime now, and that's... Oh, team kill as well. Oh, that's what killed the Dante. That sucks. I mean, it would have been the Lance eventually, but eventually isn't the same thing as now. So, with that, we are at least seeing Kingstad try to push back. There's good step scorches. The Quills are helping out, but... Oh, what the heck? Well, so much for team... He has team kills. They're right there. Lance getting team killed by another Lance. Replacing the first Lance. Apparently, there can only be one Lance. They just don't have any time for each other. In fact, I'm kind of worried for some of those flails. Oh, no, they're fine. I think the problem is that the Lance is... Their turret is above everything else. So it's easy for them to... Like, they're higher enough that it's not a big problem. But other Lances have turrets that are as high, so their hitbox is still high enough, but it's not as easy for the lance to tell, so it ends up trying to shoot past another lance and ends up hitting it. But, again, it's just Kingstead is holding on. They have Reclaim to work with, and again, Pet Turtle... I don't know, not again. Not again. Not again. This is the difference. We have enough caretakers here. Pet Turtle can use whatever amount of metal they have and actually make use of it. In fact, they're running into problems because they're building the mesas too fast. Like, the units are only taking a couple seconds to build. They're actually going to excess anyway unless they build another factory just because the time it takes for the units to get off the factory platform is too much. And this happens around 70, 80 metal per second. Pull, pour it into one factory. That's about the maximum you can do unless you're building really expensive units. But for the 300, 400 metal per second, or 300, 400 metal units that are being built, that's actually 80 metal per second or so was where you start to excess even if you have all the caretakers in the world. Just because units move. 
So yeah, Petrol's got loads of cash. They got loads of metal. Or rather, they have loads of units. Kingstown, however, has a massive variety of things going on. They have the factories. They have the Strider Hub building the Scorpions. I don't know if Pet Turtle has any plans to build any Strider Hubs. I kind of wish they would, but they haven't so far. So I don't know. Yeah, there's another, another Lance. Two Lances on top of the rest of the army. The Lances can shoot over the head of the rest of the army, I think, depending on the positioning. And yeah, more or less. Guess where the Halberds coming in? I mean, really, at, the, at this point, that's just helping soften things up. The Halberds coming in from Pet Turtle are doing most of the work. Granted, the Lance coming in from King's Dead, it was, I mean, hey, it's a good idea. I might as well copy it. So that's exactly what King's Dad does. However, the Thunderbird being the main problem... Oh, the Lance, can you deal with that? And the answer is no. No, because the Lance does want to... Oh, never mind. Second Lance took care of the Thunderbird. I don't think that's it for the Thunderbirds, but... No, it is. Never mind. That is it for the Thunderbirds. There are no more Thunderbirds left. King's Dad going for a bit of harassment over the north side of the map. It's, it's a good idea. It's not going to pay off. And Pet Turtle should be able to take this match. It's been half an hour but it should do it. Just get that in there. Get that shot. Oh, the Scorpion. More EMP. More stunning. More disarming. Get rid of this army. More or less, eventually. Oh, and the command. Oh, and the Phantom as well. Just to... Actually, it does help. That helps a lot. Not sure if you can actually do the trick, though, but it does help. Ah, Flails. Why are you going so far forward? That is not the way to go, Flails. What are you doing? Why? No. I think that's... Yeah, that's gonna be... It's probably gonna be game. I mean, it's a matter of whether the Scorpion actually survives. The Scorpion managed to kill everything. That... That is a remarkably effective Scorpion. That's the thing King's has had going for them. They keep going for Striders, and Pet Turtle doesn't have the units to actually deal with that by weight. And again, Pet Turtle, I don't think they're paying attention to their excess. Because they have too much metal for one factory. There is no way they can use all that metal into one factory. At all. Which means King's Dead survives, because Pet Turtle just isn't using all the metal they can. And really could use some heavyweight units. Lances are great artillery. They aren't heavyweight units. Like, something other than Halberd. I'm actually kind of surprised and impressed how well Pet Turtle is managing to make the game work, despite the fact that they haven't switched factory at all this game. They've been playing Hovercraft from beginning to end. But it's also the reason why the game has been going on for 31 minutes. Or 32 minutes. Because Pet Turtle can't win, at least not easily with the units they have at the speed they have them or just in general i don't think any number of units like just that's the way zero k works is that there are units that exist that are really good at dealing with crowds of opponents which means that you can't easily win with numbers and scorpion is one of those units it does a great job dealing with that and of course the phantom is also doing a fine job just dealing with what's there finally being taken down that should open things up for pet turtle but king's dead i mean they've gotten the reclaim up so it's gonna be hard to actually pull off and again, Pet Turtle's major advantage is coming from the Reclaim, and that Scorpion able to do boatloads of damage to all the Halberds. That might be enough, actually. Bad to have a suspicion it will be enough. Halberds coming in, though. They're kind of helping, sort of, maybe. It's not really. And unfortunately, all the Quills going far forward. I think these are, are these all the Quills coming in for Pet Turtle? Yeah, most of them, actually. Almost all the quills for Pet Turtle are up in the front lines there. That is risky as hell. Not unusable, but very difficult. On the other hand, another harassment coming in the side. King's Dead losing another expansion. And the Stardust, is it in position to deal with, be dealt with? Yes, it is. Barely, but yes, by the maces alone. Still, goes down, and that is going to be it. At least for that expansion. I'm not sure what King's Dead's going to be able to do from here, though. Again, Pet Turtle has most of the map. They just need to build up the metal extractors over to the northeast, maybe over to the east. And maybe get more power for overdrive? That seems like that's fine. But yeah, just need another factory. If Pet Turtle built another factory, built a Strider Hub, they'd probably have this immediately. As it stands, it's going to be a bit of a drag-out fight. I just don't see what's... <laughs> Should I stop... I don't know. I mean, like I said, King's Dead can't really lose, or can't really win, but neither can Pet Turtle. Like, all right, that's how I want to put it. King's Dead can't easily win. Pet Turtle can't easily close out the game. Like, Pet Turtle has basically won for the last 20, or last 15 minutes, or 20 minutes, actually. For the last 20 minutes, Pet Turtle has basically had the game. Or maybe, no, 15. It was kind of back and forth until about 20-minute mark. 
So for the last 15 minutes, it's been pretty even. Or sorry, it's been Pet Turtle having the not even, not at all. Pet Turtle's basically won. But they haven't finished it. And I don't think they realize this is not the way to finish it. This this force of hovercrafts is not going to close out the game. I mean, maybe with overwhelming numbers, but even then I'm not entirely sure. And Kingstad just kind of is evening things out. Just the way this game works, you can't really have super large armies work. Too many unit types deal with that, and too many units have to shoot through each other, and so they don't actually have as much power as you'd expect in numbers. So, I don't think there's a way of getting through this. Uh, Petrol's trying. Petrol's got the shot in. They've, they're moving in the halberds. They've lost a lot of kills in the process, but they are moving in the halberds. I just, again, I mean, I know Petrol's probably not watching this, but I really would just wish Pet Turtle would come in and actually build it. There it is. There's that a second factory. That is a second factory. Getting the air factory out. Finally getting another factory to be able to spend all of that money whenever they get the reclaim going, at least. I mean, with that, they should be able to set up, like, Ravens to get rid of the Scorpions or Thunderbirds just to clear, just set everything up for actually being hit and closed out. And thankfully, at least, the Scorpion is not a unit that does more damage close up. So this isn't going to be too difficult to deal with. I mean, it does a lot of damage. It does EMP, and it's a pain in the butt to deal with. And it has made cost three times over. But, despite all of that, it is still in a position where it's likely to go down pretty soon. Yeah, there it is. It's, it's gone. That is it. No, it's not it! No, it's not! The Scorpion survived! I totally got that wrong. The Scorpion isn't very much alive, very much not dead. But Ravens are being built up. This might fix things. I'm not entirely sure. I honestly don't know. Because the Scorpion's near death, but it's also cloaked, and it's kind of hard to deal with. Now, Kingstead might have broken... No, it kind of broke out of the contain. This actually could turn around. Kingstead could rebuild this stuff. They have loads of reclaim to work with. This might actually turn it around. Pet Turtle, like I said, has not been able to close out this game. They're finally switching factories. But it's not enough. And the thing is, okay, for people in Twitch that saying, this is why mis late game is miserable? No. M late game is only miserable if you're playing the mid game into the late game, which is what Pet Turtle is doing. Kings had no way of getting out of that other than what they did. Like, they... They fought against it and managed to survive, and partly because Kingstead went for the late game stuff like Striders. Even, I mean, even Striders are kind of mid mid to late game. But we aren't seeing Silo. We aren't seeing Trindy, which Pet Turtle could easily have gone for as a way of like th three minutes for buildup in the game this long. Not a big deal. So like, cutting off a Trinity just nuked out Kingstead. That would have taken the game. Or even just missile silos. Pet Turtle had load of loads of territory. I mean, they can't build a missile silo in their own main base, but the quilts are everywhere. They can just build a missile silo wherever the heck they need to. Heck, even as it is, they can just build a missile silo. What's, what's their range? Okay, so technically be... So yeah, they can build a missile silo on this island and then be able to take out Kingstad's base and not have any concerns. And even now, Kingstad is forced to retreat again. Petrodal still has a stronger economy. Kingstad has the opportunity for the reclaim, but it's not really lasting. It's just that Pet Turtle hasn't really been using their money in the most effective way, and the attrition has kind of gone back and forth because, again, Petrol has to deal with the fact that units can't shoot through, through each other, and that's a problem. But once the Scorpion goes down, that should be it. I don't see anything else Kingstead has to actually work with that. And the Scorpion will go down. There's the Scorpion down, getting bombed to death, and that is it. That is the game. Kingstead throws in the towel, and that should be everything. Oh, wait. King what? Hang on for what? Oh, Scythe in the main base. Okay. That's... I don't know if it's going to last long enough. Oh, no, I have to kill all the units, not just all the buildings. Never mind. Well, at any rate, that is King's Dad going down. Pet Turtle finally taking it off one last push, getting rid of that Scorpion. But, yeah, for reference, this is... It's only miserable if you don't play late game as late game. And that was not being done. The late game was not being played as the late game. It was being played as the mid, early to mid game. That is not how late game works. All right, well, that is that. So we are going to be moving on from there to the tiebreaker. It's going to be Pet Turtle going up against... All right, who, Izzeride, I believe. Yes, Pet Turtle and Izzeride... We'll be doing a tiebreaker. That is going to be the final match for tonight. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be up 
Oh boy, that was a thing. Like, people sh often forget, but are wise to remember, the special tab exists. Because when you have a lot of money, and you go to the special tab, you see, there's these things that cost not a huge amount of money, but break through opponent's defenses. Or just wipe out your opponent's armies. And don't take all that much metal when you're making 100 metal per second. So, late game. Anyhow, we're going to be going to a bit of a break in lieu of the tiebreaker. And, or not in lieu of, in weight of the tiebreaker. And that will be the last match for the tournament. So stay tuned. We are, uh, we are getting up to the end. Oh, this is round six. Sorry, guys. I've been watching. This was indeed round six, not round five. My bad. Be back in a minute. 